Erickson Lubin versus Luis Arias, 10 round fight. Let's get into it. Let's start with Erickson Lubin, 24 wins, two losses, 17 wins by way of knockout. It's good to see Lubin back in the ring this weekend. He was in a tough, grueling fight when we last saw him against Sebastian Fondora. That was one of those fights, man, where pieces of you get left inside of the ring. Right. We're going to find out what type of version of Lubin that we are going to have this week. And as I've said before on this channel many times before, and many of you have said how you lose a fight matters, how you lose a fight sticks with you. But that was then. This is now. And Lubin is on his A game. He is tough to beat. Lubin hasn't fought an opponent with a losing record since he turned professional. Let me say that again. He has not fought an opponent with a losing record since he turned professional. That's a crazy stat when I saw that. So that goes to show the level of fighters that he's fought. When he fought um, Jamel Charlo, he put himself in a bad position and Charlo made him pay the price. You can't make too many mistakes against the top guys, especially a guy like Charlo. Before Lubin fought Fondora, he fought Jason Rosario, and he looked very good to me in that fight. He was patient. He was consistent with his jab. He kept Rosario at his distance where he wanted him to be. Even when Rosario let off combinations, Lubin didn't get flustered. He covered up, stepped aside, and moved out of the way. Very poised, very controlled. His combinations were on point that night. His placement was on point that night. He didn't overcommit as he did in that sequence against Charlo in their fight, right? And he took what was given to him. He didn't rush in, and you could tell that he learned from the loss because when he got stopped by Charlo, man, he was more aggressive, and he rushed in and put himself in a bad spot. And, of course, he's learning from those mistakes when he fought Rosario. Right, They call Lubin the hammer for a reason, and in that third round when he fought Rosario, he was letting some hammers go in that third round. Rosario came back in the fourth round and responded very well. One thing about Lubin that he did very well in that fight, man, was he targeted the body throughout the rounds, right? He touched Rosario to the body every round and consistently did that. And in the sixth round, he hit him with a punishing body shot that ultimately closed out the show after he dropped him the first time he dropped him again. I thought it was a great win for him, right? And a fight that showed that, man, he's back right? However, what I didn't like in that fight was his inconsistency in his head movement, man. It was just too much on the line. It wasn't really moving and slipping as much as he can and as well and efficient as we've seen him done in the past before. Because when he would get hit with a certain punch or a jab, man, his head snapped back, right? But nonetheless, he got the job done against Rosario. After that, he steps in the ring with Sebastian Fondora. Fondora is a tough plan for because of his physical strengths, man. I mean, at 154 pounds, he's six foot six, six foot seven, whatever the case may be. You don't really see too many 154 pounders like that, right? That was a great back to back, back and forth fight. It was a fight of the year candidate. Some rounds went to Lubin, some rounds went to Fondora, right? When Lubin was using the jab to push Fondora back, he was having success, but when the fight got on close on the inside, man, Fondora, the shots that he was slipping through Lubin's high guard, it all it seemed like he couldn't miss. It seemed like every shot from in close that Fondora was letting off was landing. It was just slipping through Lubin's defense. I don't know what that was about. The other part was Fondora was putting together three-piece, four-piece combinations and consistently was landing. Right? And with so much volume and shots being forth, it was only a matter of time before a regular human being gets dropped and Lubin got dropped in the second round. And after that round, man, I personally felt like technique and strategy and specific game plans kind of went out the window, right? And the rest of the fight was about heart and will. It was about toughness. It was about grit. It was about digging deep to see what each fighter had. When you respond, I have to respond. When you respond, I have to respond. And I just felt like it was one of those back and forth hard will where the tougher man, the more resistant man was going to win the fight. I think heart 
I think both of those men's heart and will kept them up for a good portion of that fight too because they both got popped with consistent big shots throughout that fight. Lubin scored a knockdown in the seventh round and even up the score as it would seem. Fondora's work rate was just crazy in that fight, man. He was consistent, but the power was starting to fade a little bit. Lubin was landing the more eye-catching shots. To me, when a person gets hit as much as Lubin gets hit, even if the shots aren't coming up with the same amount of intensity and power, the consistent shots, man, it as the fight goes on, it seems to be more effective than just one power shot, man. And the accumulation of all the shots that Lubin was taking, man, I thought that fight could have went either way, honestly, from the punishment both men were taking. But in this case, man, Fondora came out on the other side. And I just thought he was more busier, right? He got more shots through. And eventually, man... <laughs> An accumulation of punches, man, at some point, the body can only take so much. And Lubin's face was twisted, reformed. It looked like something different. It was an all-out war. And that was a fight. That was a matchup that he did not get the win. But you cannot question his heart. You cannot question that man's will to keep fighting in the ring. So we'll see what Lubin looks like this weekend, man. We'll see what he has left after a fight that he had against Fondor. But let's talk about his opponent, Luis Arias. 20 wins, 3 losses, 1 draw, 9 wins by way of knockout. This is a guy who was unbeaten through 18 fights, and then he stepped in the ring with Daniel Jacobs. And that was a fight that did not go his way. He just wasn't on that level, right? He got hit too often, too consistently, but he never quit. Right, He took the shots, never got dropped, kept trying to come forward, but the speed and the output weren't something that he was able to keep up with that night. After that, he fights Gabriel Rosado, and you know we know how tough Gabe is, sometimes too tough for his own good, and Arias won that fight by split decision, but honestly, man, I thought Gabe Rosario won that fight. I thought he outboxed him and used his jab and his experience, right, and he had him hurt a few times in that fight, but Gabe did not get the favor of the judges, and he lost that fight. After that, he fought Luke Keeler, who isn't a big puncher, right? He dropped Arias twice in the first round, right? Arias had some moments throughout that fight, and he landed some big looping shots, but it didn't have any power behind it to me, right? Keeler kind of just walked through it. Arias didn't look good that night to me, right? He had some good moments, yes, right? But he was a little sloppy all night. But that looping right hand, man, was consistently landing against Keeler, right? It was on point that night. Anytime he threw it, it was landing. It was landing, but it didn't look like it had too much steam on it. And that was a fight where Keeler just walked all over him. But the interesting thing after that is then he goes to fight Jared Hurd and beats Jared Hurd by split decision. So it's very interesting to me because when you see fights like that, it's like, yo, you don't sure, you're not sure what type of guy you're going to get on any given night. And so that can be kind of tricky going in to see how a person is going to do because they could be on point that night or they can look terrible on the other night. In his most recent right, fight, man, he, I thought he looked good. A little winded as the fight went on, but, you know, for the most part, he looked pretty good in his most recent fight. So we're going to see how this one unfolds and what type of version of Luis Arias we're going to win, going to get. So who wins? You know, I like Erickson Lubin in this fight, but I have questions, as I'm sure you have questions, because the question that we want to know is, what is he going to look like, right? How much did that Fondora fight take out of him? Will he be hesitant to pull the trigger if he has the shot? Right. If he is losing, are we going to see him be more aggressive, but be cautious and not want to come forward and get hit? I don't personally think Arias has that type of power where Lubin should be too wary of getting hit. Right. But he is tough and he is durable and he's smart when he's in trouble to get himself out of trouble. So, yeah. right. So I want to say KO by Lubin. Right. Because Arias's defense isn't the best. 
He's been dropped, but never been stopped before. So, you know, I'm leaning towards the decision play on this one. So I have Erickson Lubin by decision, plus it's a 10 round fight. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning Erickson by decision. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well any amount goes towards the growth of this channel and will be greatly greatly appreciated just start a membership section on the channel don't always get to do all of the suggested videos you guys suggest in the comment section below but if you become a member those suggested videos rise to the top and i will do my best to get those done for you shout out to all of the members supporting the membership section i appreciate each of you shout out to everybody that continues to like comment share and subscribe to the channel it is greatly appreciated man almost at three thousand subscribers so if you know anyone that likes combat sports as a whole boxing and May, then definitely share this channel with them. I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video this long, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.